welcome to the show you're watching let's talk right here on ebu tv and i am so excited because not only is it friday it is farahi day but we have a special holiday today happy eid al fitr to all our muslim brothers and sisters i know you're here celebrating it it started on i just started laughing and how do you, i pronounce it how you al fitr al fitr al fitr no it's not ul is al uh, eid al fitr that, that's al how you say it eid al fitr no it's al not ul there's a ul is a different one okay. let us know All right. Uh, it's Eid Al-Fitr. <laughs> it's Eid Al-Fitr. You know what? It's Al-Fitr. Okay. Al-Fitr. Al Let Al me know. What, how do you pronounce it? All right. How do you pronounce it? Because uh, clearly me, I'm struggling over here. The WhatsApp number is available. 0777-622-230. But you know what? Whether or not I know how to pronounce it or not, at least we are celebrating the festival of finally being able to break the fast. And it's also a time of Thanksgiving. So whether you're a Muslim, a Christian, whatever other religion or de denomination you're in, this is a really good time to go ahead and introspect into your life. Think about all of the blessings that you've had in your life and really give thanksgiving for that. I can say for sure I'm definitely thankful to you as you're watching this show. It's actually really exciting and encouraging every single time. You're like, you know what? No matter how bad the day is going, I'm going to have an amazing show. We're going to be able to sit here with the girls. We're going to get some feedback from you. And it's always something that just makes me so happy. And it's definitely one thing that I am thankful for. Don't forget to hit us up on our social media, EBTV Kenya everywhere, except for Facebook, which is EBTV KE. But for now, it's your girl, Ayuma Kaguli. Uh, jabo, jabo to you, our viewers. We hope that you're well, that you're keeping well in this cold weather. Trust me, I can tell you, I am so cold nowadays. As they're drinking the cold water, me, I'm over here with my hot cuppa. Because it is not a joke. You know how I cough sometimes. It's yeah. crazy. But yeah, I was laughing at Ayuma, not because she doesn't know how to pronounce it, but because it's such a common mistake. Like most of us, we read things or we pronounce things how we read them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I am one of those people who will just read it as it is yeah. and feel so embarrassed after because like, why couldn't I have just Googled the pronunciation? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, if you're one of those people who struggles <laughs> as well, like us, as human as we are, let us know on the number. What are those struggle ones for you? Because I mean, Koshua, Kuna PM to begin at least over the same, same way. My name is Kathomi Kathomi. We're about to have an amazing show. And again, keep in mind, Jabo Jabo. <laughs> Happy Furahi Day. I was stuck in traffic today, but... The ladies will had to wait for me for yeah. like 15 minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. But I'm happy to be here to engage with you guys at home. It's a holiday today, but we are here for you guys because we always have to entertain you guys. Enjoy the show. My name is Lily Asigo. Yes, so it is a holiday. What are like, you know, the um, things that you're thankful for since this is a Thanksgiving holiday? Um, I'm just honestly thankful for my life and thank you, thankful for my safety. Because I have told you this many, many times. I, it seems I'm just clearly not cut out for driving. <laughs> because like every time I try and drive, something happens. I bang someone or someone bangs me. So I'm just thankful that I'm still safe regardless of that. Because many things could go wrong, but I'm still 100% okay and in my good health. And, you know, and my clothes are fitting better. My skin is struggling, but to go to, to Nakazana. So that's what I'm thankful for. <laughs> I am thankful for the gift of life. I'm thankful for my family. Today we're going to talk about surrogacy, but I thank God that I'm able, that I was able to give birth and I can still continue giving birth. What about Aww. you, Ayuma? Uh, I can definitely say that I'm thankful. To, okay, like in general, like good life and health and all of that. But the most important thing is health because I have been having um, a stomach flu for like today and yesterday. Oh, yeah. And like me, I'm like, I feel like death right now. But like the fact that like, I'm just like, what? At least it's the only thing that's ever, I ever have as a problem. Because in general, I don't get sick, you know? And like, even though I'm there saying, oh my gosh, I'm dying and it's just a stomach ache. Imagine if I literally was dying or I literally was having some crazy disease and uh, illness <clears throat> and everything. So yeah. we thank God for good health. Yeah, speaking about good health and the many good things that are happening in our lives, our timeline has been blessed by many dramatic affairs today. So let's get right into it. It's time for Hot Talk and beginning with the story of Sarah Kabu who is apparently being told to respect Laves as she respects her own and that is just jumbo jumbo. I tell you it's crazy. Jalango is also planning on getting into politics like many other uh, of his entertainer, entertainer friends uh, from the beginning. We hope that, you know, I'm just, I'm me, Nico too, but he's apparently trying to get into politics, so more about that in a bit. And then the person who invented Please Call Me. Do you know sometimes when you think about who invented things, you mm -hmm. never really think it through? Yeah. Because you're like, you, you use it so much, but you're never really going with, hmm, who actually came up with this? So yeah. the person who actually invented it, 
who is named Nkosana Makete, has demands. So we will talk about those demands in a bit. It's time for Hot Talk. Yeah, so we are speaking about Madame Sarah Kabu. Jabo, Jabo, we are the Kabus. And for some reason, she always finds a way. Honestly, me, I am so impressed by her clapback sometimes. I just go, girl, why did I not think about that? I don't think I would have thought about that if I was in that situation. And she was clapping back at Amber Ray. So Amber Ray posted a picture of herself looking very lovely. And then she put a caption, always, queen of captions, says, Jabo, Jabo, if no one has ever labeled you as a slave queen, then that means that you've never dressed well or looked good. And that sparked controversy because Madame Jabo Jabo herself decided to come into the mix and also give her opinions and her views. <clears throat> this is what she had to say. And this is Sarah Kabu responding to Amber Ray. She said, ha, 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 Amber and Foy, when it comes to beauty and dressing, hata atwezi bishana, nyinyi mkoju, I would vote for you as the most beautiful and glamorous woman in Kenya. Lakini, niki attend mkutano za first ladies, was senators, governors, MPs, and top CEOs all over Kenya. Na siwezi ku stand out, vile mimi who stand out, kwa world travel awards. But much love <laughs> from the Kabus. Enjoy your life, my sleigh queens. <laughs> uh, enjoy your life. Many sleigh queens are looking up to you. Your I wife. respect wow. Lane. And I'm wow. just like, yes, go <laughs> off, woman. Like, go all the way off. She's like, listen, my friend, how to quote the same WhatsApp group. In fact, the messages you get on all your WhatsApp groups and the ones I get are very different. Yeah. She went on to even <clears throat> give herself that pep talk of like, first of all, I'm out here wearing these clothes to go to awards, not wearing them to put them on Instagram. And I'm just like, yes, preach. <laughs> she continues on to bash and bash. I mean, that whole, <clears throat> let's be all the way honest, I was wondering, as I was reading this, I'm just like, would I have thought about being this snappy this fast? Yeah. Anyway, and, and then the beef obviously continued on because, you know, the um, Ambare is Ambare and Sarakabu is Sarakabu. But I'm just waiting to see how it goes down. Because if this becomes a, becomes a fashion off, imagine how cool that would be. Yeah. Like if they just went on the battle of the fashionistas. Like how cool would that be? But she's already said her she's Sarakabu has already said her she's not a fashionista. She's no, leaving no, it no. to Kinanani. But as she's going for those CEO meetings, oh. ha, COVID has been given an allowance of two more hours <laughs> now she can go and see her ceos her fellow governors and first ladies she can go and flaunt her clothes now i just want it to be like a battle of events you know slay queen is going here taking pictures kabu is going there taking pictures and then we put them all on instagram and we see who is actually the contending winner of this battle because it's oh so juicy yeah, yeah. Let me, but you know, there was a reply for Amber Ray, yeah, mm -hmm. that ha, that she responded to after Sarah Kabu went ahead and gave her that uh, clap back. So, what did uh, Amber Ray have to say? Uh, let me quickly go back to that. Sorry, <laughs> I was so excited about this picture. Anyway, so she said. Okay, she said, talking about standing out, indeed, you are the most outstanding CEO wife on Instagram streets. <laughs> no minding, uh, not minding your own business is your greatest strength. Why? Out of all the senators, governors, MPs, and CEO wives, you are the most organized. That's why you have enough time to hop from one page to another commenting nonsensical stuff. Cheers. Back to my lane, Madam CEO. As president of Second Wives, <laughs> you are not, you welcome, are not here. welcome here. And I'm just like, okay. You know, the, thing, dropped. the thing about this beef that makes me uh, cringe a little bit, because the thing is, it's funny, yeah? Clearly, Sarah Kabu, her comeback was way, way, way. That was hilarious. Of course, we already know Amber Ray was going to do what she was going to do. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm wondering, as a CEO, as a businesswoman, as an award-winning travel agency uh, person, owner, owner mm -hmm. yeah? Why am I stooping myself low so that I can now be having um, uh, uh, arguments on social media with Slay Queens? She's 
board. No, exactly. And so what Amber Ray said when she responded, it made 100% sense. Like, at first I was like, wait, wait, that's such a good comeback. But what she actually said at BSC, you have enough time to hop on onto people's pages, not minding your own business, minding other people's business. She is actually saying the truth. Because let me tell you, if I was a CEO of an award-winning uh, organization, yeah, I would be way too busy to be wondering what uh, Amber Ray is saying on social mm. media. Way mm. too busy to be wondering what's happening on this, this other social media beef over here. Like, I am too busy trying to make money. I am too busy trying to make business deals. I'm too busy trying to sign checks. Like, it doesn't make sense why Sarah Kabu is stooping herself down to the level of these other people who she's looking down upon. You're calling them slay queens, yet you're there busy arguing and fighting with them. Mm. So you now just become a CEO slay queen at this point. Well, she started by saying jabo jabo. Mm. Jabo jabo, if you ask me, ni salamu, kwa kiswahili osema jambo. So jabo jabo doesn't necessarily mean that she was attacking Sarah Kabo. Ah. No, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. Like, for example, mm. Juakali likes using watu, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So if someone else was to start a sentence by watu and then andike this, does it mean that I'm tukana? No. So she was just like, jabo jabo, if no one has labeled you, na, 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 then you're not a slay queen. Ah, then you don't look good. It is true. Kama hujai ito a slay queen, by the way, ni ukuweli. Okay. Kama hujai ito a slay queen, because slay queens are people who <laughs> dress well, look good, <coughs> take care of themselves, mm -hmm. no, 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 ni more expensive. That's why mo most people will say, so it is true. I don't think I'll go and attack Sarah Kabu, but since I don't want to make you jabo jabo, do I feel the need? Ya kumjibu, ya kusema we sit in the meetings, we sit to fanya nini. So it depends on where you are in life. The other view, it could be differently. If you're a slave queen yourself, obviously you touch kuasa idia mbari. If you're a, a go-to wife, you touch kuasa idia Sarah Kabu. Like, eh, hey, nini slave queens? Whoa, I'm a queen. He comes back to me. Nini nini. You're like, eh, hey, umshuguli ki anakuja kongo slave queen. Ugh, it's just, it's a mess. But for me, I feel as if I agree with you mm. that Sarah Kabu didn't have to answer. Yeah. You know. Ange nyamaza tu ingenda, ange respond, hey. you know. Me, it, it lowers her brand as a business woman, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> she's a, she's a businesswoman. She's not supposed to be here slaying and queening over here with Kina Amberi. Mm. And then something else, tables turn. You might not have money right now, but who knows? In future, you might be the next millionaire. So it's never too late. For me, I would never brag to someone that I have money because I know even you, so you have two legs, two feet yeah. and two hands. Two legs, two feet. <laughs> so you can still, <laughs> you can Sorry. still become successful yeah. at any point in your life. So for me, as a jibu, and uh, talking about senators, governors, MPs, and CEOs, <laughs> Jalango wants to join the list by by vying for Langata seat come 2022. Anataka kuwa MP Langata. Mtampakura si juu, but he went on to say. By the way, hakuna kutoroka, mpaka kwa debe, all dreams are valid. God got us on this, started from the bottom, now we are here and we are not stopping. Like See rabbit. you at the finish line. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds like a rap lyric. The streets that we is, walked it, on hungry with no hopes are the streets that have our billboards, which is true. Even this will come to Ha. So it seems that he is very serious. And you know why he's very serious? Mm. It's because KJ Ali took the entertainment industry and he was able to get into politics. We have Jaguar also who was in the entertainment industry and now he's in the uh, Senate. And we also have Frasha who also tried it. So he just Even wants to Dijo, try his uh, luck. What's his name? Uh, Mohad mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so... Good luck. <laughs> you know what? I don't know about this. And the only reason why I feel a way, okay, maybe he's actually in the right company. Because when you look at our <laughs> politicians right now, they don't exactly say things that I 100% agree with. And maybe he's a, more, a, a controversial person enough that he can be able to do that. My only thing is like, what kind of change is he trying to uh, get? Is he just trying to do it so he can prove that he can do it? Because, yeah, he has fans. All those uh, hundreds and thousands of views on uh, YouTube, are they going to translate into votes? I don't know. Uh, are your fans going to translate into votes? I don't know. But like, what are you going to do as a politician? What are you trying to change as you're going to be there trying to be at the MP for Langata? What's for Langata? So you guys start asking him questions because at the point, I, I really do think he can get mm -hmm. it, but it'll just be a thing of public, uh, what's it called, of being a, a, a popularity contest. Just mm -hmm. like how uh, uh, what's Jaguar. His name? Jaguar was able to get it 
and it was a hot mess mm -hmm. and like it was j it's just I don't I don't see him doing something and he has to let us know what does he want to do what change is he trying to bring <sighs> okay look if you want to be a politician power to you it's amazing we need new blood we need young new blood and you are going to probably inspire a few people to actually think about it if Jalango can do it I can do it as well so power to you but this is not how to announce it if you're going to announce um, you're trying to vie for a seat. Isn't there a particular way of doing it? It's a very clear cut way of doing it. So just do that. I don't know. Power to you. <laughs> Guy, <laughs> it seems like over here on the table, there's a little bit of skepticism when it comes to Jalango and his um, getting into politics. So we want to hear from you. What do you think about this? I think, it, honestly, if he tells me what he wants to do and he's trying to plan on how he's going to make it happen, I can I can agree with him. But he has to tell me what changes are, is he trying to make. We're not trying to just engage another person so that he can go and steal money over there. But or open okay. more clubs. Or open more no clubs. I, tell, I was hearing it, see, um, Mr. <laughs> director over here saying I see how my fans were a certain club over there mm. are they the ones who are going to now vote mm. for him and everything but you know what I want to hear from you 0777-622-230 is the whatsapp number are we being too harsh on Jalango what do you think but we have some interesting news when it comes to please call me I know we have all used that um div uh, that what, what would I call it that USSD tag. As that in, USSD yes, tag. Yes, it's like a hashtag. You, it's a USSD well, code that you send. Yeah, it's a uh, free message. Yeah, Let me just USSD say it's an application. Code. We've all used that type of application. When you know life has just hit us hard, you don't have any credit, you're not able to call somebody. But shockingly, this, as, uh, this was actually made up by somebody. He goes by the name of uh, Kosana Makate. And he's the one who came up with the whole Please Call Me concept in 2001. Now, he's currently fighting with um, a tele a telecommunications company and demanding 700, no, 75 billion Kenyan shillings. 75 billion Kenyan shillings for coming up with the concept of please call me. Now this telecommunications company has offered him 354 million and he says that is not enough. It is way too little, too late. He made up, uh, he came up with this concept all the way in 2001. They've been making money off of it and he needs his money. Let me tell you, when it comes to the, when it comes to coming up with all these concepts and everything, especially in Kenya, you better have your pen and paper and your contract <laughs> tight because these big uh, organizations will be so quick to steal your concept and not pay you a cent. Mm -hmm. We can just think about that whole story that we heard about now, like, you know, the mobile transfer, yeah. the one that we all use, yeah? Mm -hmm. And how that whole situation has happened, who the, ch the, the it was a, a college student, a university student that came mm -hmm. up with it, right now doesn't have a single cent to his name, and that mobile transfer is now making billions and billions and billions yeah. of shillings. Mm -hmm all around the world, not just in Kenya, around the world. So the fact that he's asking for 75 billion, I don't think it's too much to ask for. I think you should continue fighting for it. But actually, people who come up with these cool ideas, innovators, please make sure you get your contracts right. Yeah, I feel like it's important for people to start uh, marking intellectual property for what it is. Because mm. it is you, you sat down, you thought of a good concept, and then some big organization who has the money and the power to flex that idea, then comes up, snatches it up, and no one will know. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. We will all know the big telecom that are usually using these tags. We'll all know the big companies that steal your ideas. Trust me, at the end of the day, the, the person who probably came up with the, with the logo for the double C's going backwards, it was probably someone who was just sitting down and drafting it about. Mm -hmm. But then a big company saw it, liked it, and took it up, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like let's just start valuing our ideas a little bit more and also be keen on who we're sharing our concepts with. Because mm -hmm. trust me, in the same way you sit down today, Lily has said this uh, on the table today, that you don't know where you're going to end up being, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm starting here with just sitting down, having concept ideas and mm -hmm. strategizing and stuff like that. But then the next day, uh, Yuma gets 10 million. She might just take up my idea. What do I have? I sure will. I don't have the money <laughs> to start fighting her in court, you know? I don't have the capability to go and fight her on a legal battle because mm -hmm. it is very expensive to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I think the better idea or the better uh, way about it is just to try and mark your territory and get these patents, get these um, copyright uh, deals, get these, mm -hmm. all of these papers. Yeah. It's important to have it because at least you have something to go by. Trust me, when you've been conned enough times, <laughs> You will know. And by the way, the, the, the mobile company you're talking about, that person who took them to court lost the case. Yeah. So we don't know about this one. Yeah. He might lose the case. Yeah, probably. But who knows? At least guys are agreeing with him. And someone here called Bernadette Hegger says...
can he just give me 1 billion from the 354 <laughs> akienda kupigana court <laughs> Anyway, we all want money, we all want to become rich, but sometimes it is a fact that when you take someone to court, you might either win the case or lose the case. And sometimes when you lose the case, you lose all the money. So just trade carefully. So now we are going to go straight on to Ask the Girls. We appreciate you guys who normally send us in your questions and we are ready to answer them. So Ask the Girls. Hey. Yes, we have someone saying, hi girls, mm -hmm. looking smart. I am Fred from Kite. I have a girlfriend who is blessed with one child. We have already, we have already one year since the dating. I'll just read the way it is written. We have already one year since dating and the problem is we are far away from each other due to job, business. Another problem is she doesn't like us visiting parents as in she wants to stay without going home. So advise me because I want to introduce her to my parents as my wife. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. First of all, we've talked about long distance uh, relationships before. They hardly work. So this one is a long distance relationship. And then she does not want to introduce this guy to her parents or take her to her parents' place. I mean, what is she hiding? Mm. Is she hiding another kid there? Or um, is she afraid that they're going to judge her by having some... I don't understand the situation, but for me, if um, I'm this guy, Fred, can you just leave her alone? Just yeah. give her some time. Give her the space. <clears throat> she needs to decide on what she wants in future, if she wants you or not. I feel like you haven't had this conversation with her in terms of you want to make her your wife, that you're now serious about the relationship. So maybe she just thinks you're another boyfriend. You've been dating for a year, yeah? And now you want to take her home. Mama, she, you're trying to force her to bring you home to visit the parents. And she's like, see, I don't know how this relationship is going because let me tell you, I was that kind of person um, where I'd be meeting people's parents see, three months in, six months in one year in and then no oh, you're never gonna meet my mom i'm telling you like you have to be the one until now i finally make let you uh, meet my parents because it's a serious thing especially for women you don't just want to be there bringing a, a line of men every year someone else is just popping up into the house and everything and as you're there trying to figure out your life so i think you need to let her know that you're serious about her you want to make her your wife and therefore you think it's important that you meet her parents and vice versa she meets your parents and you make the whole situation official then from there, you can get to understand how serious she is about you and the relationship. But a year in, <laughs> and he doesn't know if she's serious. Imagine that's what it's not. I think in a year yeah. in marriage, I think it's if they haven't had a conversation about marriage, a year in, it's possible. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Maybe they just have a different relationship with the parents. Because sometimes we assume that simply because you've been introduced to someone's parents, it's the it seals the deal. But yeah, it could be a situation where they've probably introduced their parents to many other people and it doesn't make a difference. It's just the other guy who's come in. So it probably isn't a very big deal for her for you to meet the parents and vice versa, for her to meet your parents. So I think maybe, I don't know, find out what kind of family she's been raised in, what kind of environment she's been raised in, because it will enable you to know her a little bit more. But yeah, if you, our intentions are to marry her, then go ahead and pronounce it. I don't know what you're waiting for. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. Just go, <laughs> do it. <Aye. laughs> Just go ahead and have this conversation with your girl. I think this relationship can be salvaged, yeah. you know? Yeah. It can be salvaged. Just communicate, communicate, communicate. If you also have some advice over here for Fred, make sure you go ahead and send it to our WhatsApp number, 777 And you can send that advice as we're going to go on a short commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about modern parenthood and what things are you willing to do, especially when it comes to surrogacy. Back, you're still watching Let's Talk right here on Ebru TV, and you can go ahead and hit us up on our social media. Let me tell you, Ebru Let's Talk underscore official is our Instagram where you can go and slide in the DMs, let us know the personal questions that you may have that you may be a little bit afraid to go ahead and ask publicly. And you can still sh uh, show us some love on our YouTube channel on Ebru TV Kenya and watch all of our past episodes. Go in the comment section over there. Well, yeah, even someone comments some nice things because our comment section. <laughs> 
views on YouTube, says <laughs> Ingine. It's a little bit tricky, but you know what? It's okay because we still love any type of feedback that we get from there. But today on this a lovely Friday evening, we are going to be talking about modern parenthood. And some of the things that happen right now during this new generation of parenthood, we've now recognized that people are not able to have children as easily as it was before. It's now it's not as frowned upon now when you're not able to, when you're having infertility issues and you're not able to conceive and there's various options that you can have and surrogacy is one of those options and I'm sure that you know many of you already know what surrogacy is but for those of you who don't know I can enlighten you a little bit it's basically an arrangement often supported by a legal agreement whereby a woman ag uh, agrees to bear a child for another person or persons who will become the child's parents after birth and I'd really like to know from you ladies especially from the non-mother <laughs> over here if you were not able to conceive and you wanted to have a child a child would you uh, use surrogacy um this was such a foreign concept to me before um i think this is about 2016 or something there about i was still pretty young i was like yeah i don't know i'm, I'm getting into my career i really don't want to think about being a mother so i it's just i'm, I'm gonna put a pause on that until I'm ready, because I wasn't ready for sure. And then the person that I was hanging out with at that point was like, yeah, but you don't have to do it yourself. There's always the option for surrogacy. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be the mother. You don't have to take care of any of the issues. You don't need to be pregnant or staying at home for nine months plus just so you can be able to do this. Why not opt for surrogacy? We can do this. It's easy that way. No one, no one suffers. The person makes money. Like it's a win-win situation all around. Mm. So... Um, <clears throat> I think, yeah, it's, it's a really good uh, route to take if, for many reasons. But yeah, if I still was in a situation where I wasn't able to get my own children, uh, yeah, it's an option I, I, sh I would take. If I really wanted children, it's an option I would take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would take that option too because kids are amazing. And you only know they are amazing if you have them yourself. Yeah, so I would definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree 100%. Like, if I really wanted to, I do want to have children in the future. And if I wasn't able to conceive and have children of my own, surrogacy definitely would be an option that I would really want to do. And then, like, if that doesn't work out, then, like, adoption, you know? But, like, I just can't see my life in the future without children. So in one way or another, these children have to come. So whether I'm not able to conceive, we need to do something. And, like, you know, a child has to be, like, um, in my life. But like, if you, what would happen if you decided um, you wanted to uh, have a surrogate? Mm -hmm. How would you go about having this conversation with your partner, especially in the African context? Because we know it is not as um, acceptable. It's kind of seen as a taboo. I was reading about it over here, and especially in Kenya, a lot of religious leaders are against it. They have uh, issues with it, and we can also see like you know the traditional leaders as well. They don't like the idea of some other woman hold you know carrying a, a child for you. It's always seen as a taboo. So like. How how would you come across it? How would you introduce the concept to your partner and even their family? Well, you know, if you want to have kids, the first thing you do is try to have them. So once you start trying to have kids with your partner, you definitely know if you don't conceive in the first like three years, you know that there is a problem. Then you start consulting the doctors. First, most, most couples try the IVF method first mm. before surrogacy. And if that method doesn't work, I don't think it will be as difficult to tell it to your partner mm -hmm. unless you break up with that, that uh, partner and then you meet someone new. That when is, that's when it's going to be a little bit difficult to explain to this person that, by the way, I have a problem uh, conceiving. But um, I don't know how I would go about it. Maybe just like write an SMS first and then when he comes, then you can <laughs> talk about it. Because <laughs> it, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, I'm a strong believer in the fact that communication is important, regardless of how difficult it is. You need to have some conversations. If it's a conversation that needs to be had, it doesn't matter whether it takes three years, five years, it still needs to be had. Otherwise, there's a problem. So start looking at it from that perspective of this has to be handled, let's do it now. And as we've said, surrogacy is not only the option, the last option or the last resort for many, many situations. Adoption is an option mm -hmm. as well. But if surrogacy is the option that you want to take for whatever reason, either you're unable to have your own children or you just don't want to do it. You know, some people mm -hmm. want to look all snatched like, the whole the rest of their lives. That's still a reason to have Can you surrogate. imagine like, letting people know? I say, oh, yeah, so I'm going to have a surrogate. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. You're not able to conceive. Oh, no, I'm just trying to keep my figure. Yeah. You know, it sounds so vain. <laughs> and this is where so I am coming. Vain. Now, this is why I'm coming to this point of the conversation. 
at the end of the day, it's really not about anyone else. It's a very personal decision, and it's also a very um, closed nuclear family type of decision because some parents may not understand it. So what what happens if his mother, your mother-in-law, doesn't understand that situation, or what happens They're if there, bring is, in a there is one wife. cousin mm. who has a problem? Yeah. See? So now that's the thing. It needs to be a very personal decision. You need to know your partner to begin with for you to be able to have. If you're having a life with this person, imagine it doesn't matter whether you have children or not. At the end of the day, they love you, not your your ovaries. If your ovaries were taken out today, you're trying to tell me that they would run away. You know? yeah. And that's the problem. If you're with that kind of a person, then you're in the wrong place to begin with. So it, 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 it shouldn't be that. I, I know with all the stigma, with all the energy that you get from other people, because they're like, why can't you just give birth on your own? Mm. Normally, culturally, traditionally, this is how we do it. So now breaking that, this is how we do it kind of theory can be a bit difficult. But it shouldn't be as difficult when you're with someone you trust, you love, and cares for you. you yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. So that basically just brings up uh, brings us back to the whole topic of communication. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. have strong communication with your partner, it doesn't matter. It's like literally like us against the world because you're trying to start a family of your own, mm -hmm. you know? It doesn't matter what your in-laws may think, which other extended family members, fa family members may think. As long as you guys are on the same page when it comes to this, everything should be okay. Exactly. And you know, I was seeing this conversation um, on Ed Gobara's Instagram. Uh, Instagram stories where they were talking about selling your ovaries mm -hmm. and apparently in this crazy Nairobi streets of ours eh, we have at CCG university students out there selling their eggs for 30,000 shillings 20,000 no, shillings 15,000 15, shillings and I was just like what the heck is going on like has the level of um, poverty reached that much that we're not willing to do that and it's not even a situation of poverty it's just a situation of getting money for like you know frivolous things getting money for partying and for whatever Whatever, uh, drinking and stuff like that. But like, would you be willing to sell your eggs? Okay, <laughs> there's something you said that has to be mentioned. What? Trust me, you don't get rich easily. No one, it doesn't just stumble upon you that every, you know, everyone has this mentality of, I'm going to win a lottery. Mm. Someone is going to see me and feel sad for me and give me 10 million shillings. Yeah. That's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And if it does, it's like one in every. A thousand stars that have gone past you shooting. It's crazy for people to start. And we need to get out of that mentality to begin with. Because this is what is leading people to making Selling desperate. Selling their eggs. Yeah, just yeah. a desperate yeah. move. You don't have to sell your eggs for you to make money. You're in school, aren't you? Work hard in school. Try and make money that, uh, in a better way, in a more decent way. Especially if it's money for clubbing and clothes. Surely. Surely. Yeah. 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 clothes will get old. Yeah, Even that alcohol sense. will just be taken out of your system 100%. Yeah, it makes sense if they, they're paying their school fees too. It that. makes sense if it's, yeah. a, it's, it's for a particular reason. Like you're getting this money as a lump sum because you need to get a loan for a mortgage that your parents took and now they can't afford. Your business is falling apart and you're trying to figure out a way to figure. And this is where you've come to. Like it needs to be like a last a resort. Dire yeah. situation. A last resort type of mm. conversation. But yeah, going back to the question that you were asking, um, I suppose... We, we just need to, it's a value system, let's just value ourselves more. And in case you are a surrogate, there's no judgment there. Yeah. That's just, mm -hmm. there are people who just like to give birth, you know, like they just love bringing new life into the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't now start judging them. But would you give your eggs? Not, My eggs. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, not yeah. being a surrogate. Being a surrogate, that's, that's a whole other Different. level yeah. of, of, of um, what's it called? That, that's too much sacrifice. But your eggs <laughs> is just, you know, you're just sitting over here. You, you remember when I was 18 years old, I went to give away my egg. So now I'm like, you know, 40. I yeah. have a child somewhere out there, yeah. you know, just living life. Like, how do you feel now knowing that there's just like babies out there that are yours? I think, again, goes back to the, <laughs> the, the decision, the reason why you were giving away your eggs. Because if it was for a good cause, then you're probably okay. Or oh, this couple have been struggling to get children for so long and you just feel the need to, you know, just help them. You just It's just one egg. But at the end of the day, if it was for something useless, oh yeah, you're going to regret that stuff so really you? hard would i give an egg <laughs> I, I would I, i'm not sure about all the pain uh because again i just i don't like pain but i would do it in in a situation where it was like say you lily wanted another child and mm -hmm. then somehow her body has shut down and it's yeah. refusing mm -hmm. and she spoke to me nicely i would just be okay <laughs> with giving her an egg 
or two. <laughs> okay, girl. <laughs> An egg. Hey, me, Lily, you will just get a hug from me. <laughs> we will sit there and pray. Uh -huh. We will sit there and do the research on seeing how we can find you someone else to donate the egg. But do you I know don't how think many I would eggs? do, do you it. Know you have millions of millions. eggs. Yeah. So you can't give me one. Imagine. Why not? You I, I mean, it's because I, I feel as if I have that att attachment to it. To so your egg. Exactly. Why? I have an attachment to and my egg. And the one breaking month. every month. Let me tell you, the fact that I know there's a there's a child out there with my DNA yeah. running around over there calling somebody else mom. I don't know how that child is living. I don't know what's going on with them. Like I couldn't be able to live with myself. Like it would just be like it would be, it would be like constant what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. But do you know it's easy to live with that if you know if you haven't had a, your child and then you had to take them maybe Ushago or somewhere. It's thank different. you. It's the there, same thing. you don't even know. That's why we have doppelgangers. Yeah, doppelgangers. Maybe mm -hmm. someone donated their egg somewhere because people say there's someone somewhere who looks exactly like you. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Probably that's the case. But mm -hmm. for me, yes, I would donate my eggs. I would first freeze them. Donate your eggs. So I just <laughs> freeze them and start selling them. <laughs> moja, moja, but I, I, would, I would consider. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. interesting. I don't know. Um, I, I, you can let us know your thoughts if you're willing to donate your eggs, if you have ever thought about it. And if you have thought about it, apparently in Kenya, you have to be between the ages of 18 and 25 years old, mm -hmm. about 55 to 65 kgs. I heard a rumor, the prettier you are, the more expensive your eggs will be. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what's, what it is about that, but in general, it costs about from 50,000 shillings yeah. and you can go up upwards from mm. there. Mm. And what's really interesting that in Kenya, it's a lot uh, cheaper mm. because like we're talking about 50,000 to 100,000, but like in the US, in the US, like the lowest is $4,000 yeah. to give away your eggs, which makes wow. sense because like this is literally like, it's a very painful process. It's mm -hmm. a whole entire life. I think there should be a lot more compensation than just 50,000 shillings. In a yeah, country I know where we, our, our <laughs> statistically, most of the people, like about 50% of our population is now below 19, 19 yeah. and below. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a country where you expect people to be so sad giving you children. I will pick them up from the street <laughs> if you refuse to give me your egg. And it's me, I know of someone who donated an egg mm -hmm. and then later on when she got pregnant, it was ectopic. It was really bad. She almost lost wow. her life. So I don't know if it's, if it's the whatever, what, what, do, what do we call it? Mm. The process itself? Yeah, I don't know if it's because of that maybe or is it something need, else. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you need to do a lot of research about where you're doing this to begin with. Yeah. Exactly. Don't just let anyone come into your uterus. Bruh. Mm -hmm. Bruh. Yeah. Bruh. <laughs> it's your uterus. <laughs> you're going to have other children in the future. <laughs> and talking about doing your research, if you're literally looking at surrogacy as an option for you, we have to remember that in Kenya, it is un unregulated, meaning that there are no um, laws over here in, in uh, specific to surrogacy mm -hmm. and that can get you in a really messy situation mm -hmm. and that is the most important part even when we're looking at the definition for surrogacy mm -hmm. it has to be Legally supported binding. by a legal mm -hmm. agreement yeah. and if there's no law for it even if you have a legal agreement you guys make a contract by yourself if someone else decides like for example your surrogate mm -hmm. decides that she's going to decide to keep the child how are you taking her to court? What law has she, she bro broken? She, 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 she she the baby is cute yes. at best. Because you're the mother of the child. If you give birth to a child, you are the mother. Mm. Yeah. So I can go with that and we go to court. So mm -hmm. I'm the mother and you will lose the case. Imagine. And like this is like in Kenya. So let me tell you, if you're really thinking about doing it seriously, I would advise you to go and do it abroad where they have more serious, um, uh, what's it called, laws when it's, it comes yeah. to surrogacy. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in Kenya... Mm -hmm. Hey, mm. and if someone tells you, oh, 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 now I changed my mind, you better pay me an X amount of money if you yeah. want your child mm. back. I can see that type of situation happening. Mm. But like, what would you feel like now if you were the mother and then now you've gone ahead and gotten a surrogate and then she's decided, I want this child. I'm not giving you the baby. You just have to beg her. Because if you go to court and you didn't sign somewhere, you will definitely lose the case. So for me, I'll just beg that person. please. But if you've met people who are struggling to conceive, Hey, mm -hmm. it is not easy. Mm -hmm. Some women cry every single day. And if you're just able to like be a surrogate to them, please kindly. Mm -hmm. Beba mtoto, 
Payana. In fact, the best thing one does is as soon as you give birth to that uh, don't baby, don't even look at the baby. Mm. Just hand the baby over. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and here is another problem. Even you, as you're going into surrogacy, which is an amazing option, an amazing route for you to have children, you need to re realize that that baby might, is definitely not going to look like you. Just, just saying. Especially if it was a donation of the ovum, that baby is not going to look like you. That baby is probably going to look like the mother or mm. in God's graces look like your husband so <laughs> <laughs> by god's grace it might look like your husband so just also be very keen when you're trying to think about things like this because it just because it's not um what's it called postpartum depression, depression. Yeah. simply because it's not coming from you and your mm. these effects are not being felt by you there might be other forms of stress and f trying to figure out because it's a lot it's very heavy for you to raise a child and even the attachment you get attached mm. to a child once mm -hmm. you carry mm -hmm. them yeah yeah so yeah. It, it both ways in in the cases of both people both the people who want the child and the people who are donating the child or are offering to be a surrogate you need to have First of all, like a proper, proper discussion. When you're going into this conversation, mm. try and have people talk to you. Mm -hmm. Try and have people you can talk to at the same time. Yeah. Because at the same time, for you to know that that child, that woman is going to disappear with the child, it's not like they just woke up and decided they're going to disappear with that child. Yeah. They've been mm -hmm. thinking about this over time. So it means if you're in conversation, you're in counseling, then you will know when these issues are starting to arise yes. early enough mm -hmm. and you'll be able to nip them in the bud. Mm -hmm. So because it's such a new concept in Kenya, we need to look at it from that perspective of it's new. How mm -hmm. do you handle a new situation? Right. You know, you yeah. get guidance, you get information. How do you even you choose keep that person? Cho Thank and you. trust her to take care of your child. Like me, yeah. like honestly, once you say you're my surrogate, you're moving in with me. How do I <laughs> not that's know? Another what problem. are you going to be eating? No, but I, what are but you that's another drink? problem. But like you you brought another woman into your house. Yeah. How is your relationship with your, your husband, husband at this point? Yeah. yeah. Is it going to be a situation where now you are going to be taken out of that equation? <laughs> no, wait, <laughs> just stay there. You see what I mean? It's already you have already brought yeah. my child. <laughs> now that's her own. And then she's hot. Uh, <laughs> but I believe there are registered companies in, I don't know if it's in Kenya, but there are registered companies which have a list of women who do this for mm. a living. Mm. So instead of you just going to the streets and picking someone, mm -hmm. you can just like go through this organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And don't forget the baby doesn't always come fully baked. It could be a problem with now mental health issues. You know, mm -hmm. it could be a problem who has some weird physical deformity. This mm -hmm. is a child who you have paid for, which means you have to take care of this child regardless of how they look. It's not now you're leaving this person with the child. The surrogate yeah. <laughs> has come with a baby who... <laughs> 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 you're looking at them like huh? <laughs> keep the money keep the baby and you know when the keep baby comes all. from you yeah. you love it no matter what yeah. that child yeah. you're looking like a troll like, yes. but you love that troll <laughs> have you ever seen mothers sometimes <laughs> and like, you know, I'm not trying to say <laughs> listen there's no such thing as ugly babies okay <laughs> but some babies, are not ugly babies. <laughs> some babies are they're not all made equal but when it's when you are the mother you love that child regardless <laughs> someone somewhere who sued the wife for burying ugly, ugly children. children. <laughs> yeah, this thing's happened. So you're there with a baby, a guy. And you know, the, first of all, all babies look the same on their board. Like day mm. one, they all just look like aliens. Yeah, like <laughs> aliens with that thing on the head. Like this, I don't understand it. My point is, you need to be very okay with whatever the, the child it's comes obvious. out yeah. of that woman's nini situation. Yeah. Just like, be aware that it doesn't always have to look like, as we said, yeah. she could be carrying genes of her great grandfather, mm. boy, boy, who is boy. a very, of very close relations to the evolutionary chart. <laughs> and since we're already over here trying making jokes and everything, I guess we can continue with the joking atmosphere yeah. and get into a little bit of game. Hey, okay.